No matter where you are located, almost all of your internet data is transmitted through a hidden network of undersea cables. In fact, 97% of all internet traffic runs through this hidden infrastructure of thousands of miles of fiber optic cables that zigzag our ocean floors. With our dependence on the internet increasing by the day, modern life is totally reliant on these subaquatic wires. But how do they work? And what is the future of internet communications? Also, how is it possible that your internet connection is almost always there? Don't these cables get destroyed by ships and sharks? In today's video, let us explore the depths and find out how the internet travels across oceans. The idea of transmitting signals through wires by connecting two land masses separated by an ocean is not new. The first ever undersea cable was laid in 1850 between Britain and France. Later, in 1958, the Atlantic Ocean was bridged. It is hard to imagine that we are still essentially using the same concept even after 170 years. These undersea cables are laid down by specialized ships called cable layers that hold thousands of miles of coiled cables on their decks. After charting a safe path, avoiding fishing zones, anchoring areas, fault lines, and other potential dangers, these ships navigate the course and slowly uncoil cable onto the ocean surface. Buoys are used to keep the cables floating. Once the operators are satisfied, and the weather is right, they cut the buoys and allow the cables to sink to the ocean floor. Underwater technicians will follow its progress to make sure that the cables do not get tangled and are being laid in the right place. According to the Submarine Cable Map of the World, as of 2021, over 436 subsea cable systems have been laid, crisscrossing all the major oceans and seas. Combined, that's over 800,000 miles of undersea cables operational today, twice the distance between our Earth and the Moon. But these are obviously not the same types of cables used a century ago. The modern subsea cables on which our wireless world rests are specifically designed to carry large amounts of data packets over long distances. These cables are rarely much wider than a garden hose, but at their core are many individual fiber optic threads, each carrying billions of bits of information per second. The fiber optics are sheathed in various layers of silicon, plastic, steel wiring, copper, and mylar. The design is optimized to provide insulation to the signal and protect the cable from damage from weather, man-made or natural events, or even wildlife. Yes, you heard that right. Ocean wildlife like sharks gnawing on a cable can cause major damage, and it has happened before to some of Google's cables. So you know, I can't help but think, a shark eating through cables would be a better game than Chrome's jumping dinosaur. Although by far, the most common cause of cable damage is accidental human activities, such as fishing vessels or ships dragging their anchors along the ocean beds. Damage to these cables can be caused by intentional human activity as well, like sabotage during times of conflict, or by transnational terrorism activities. However, such incidents are historically rare. But do not worry, your family WhatsApp group is in no danger. Companies that operate these cables follow a safety in numbers approach, spreading their networks over multiple cables. That way, if one breaks, it doesn't bring down the whole network with it. Anyways, we digress. Let us get back to the cables. The fiber optic threads are the secret sauce that makes these underground cables so successful. The theory governing this technology is known as total internet reflection. Similar to the way light is reflected between two glass surfaces, data signals are beam down these subsea cables using the same principle and lasers. When the lasers from one end hit the glass fibers, it is reflected back up the length of the cable traveling toward the receptors at the other end of the cable. This process is repeated over and over again at staggering speeds, maintaining the global chain of communications. And by bundling many fiber optic threads together in one cable, this form of data transmission can handle enormous amounts of traffic all at once. So how fast are these undersea modern cables, you might wonder? Well, the recently installed called Maria Transatlantic Undersea Cable, which became operational in 2018, is capable of carrying 224 terabytes of information per second along its eight fiber optic pairs. As if this was not impressive enough, Facebook, or rather Meta, announced in late 2021 that it is contracting Japanese information technology giant NEC to make a transatlantic cable capable of transmitting at 0.5 petabytes per second. That is 500 terabytes, or 500,000 gigabytes per second. Facebook is also working on the largest subsea cable project in the world, connecting 33 countries in Africa, the Middle East, and Europe, called Two Africa. It will stretch 45,000 kilometers connecting three different continents and has a design capacity of up to 180 terabytes per second at launch. Similarly, Google has also recently confirmed its high-speed subsea cable project, Equiano, which will run from Portugal to South Africa, connecting Nigeria along the way. Of course, this does not mean that you, the end user, will 
will get this speed anytime soon, but it would definitely allow your internet service provider to up their game and offer even faster speeds and more reliable connections. Speaking of providers, let us look at the owners of these massive networks of undersea infrastructures that literally run our world. In the early days of the internet, existing undersea cable networks were already owned and operated by major telecom carriers, AT&T and BT, so they would lease out bandwidth to other players in the market. The decade of 1990 saw a major boom in the industry. Undersea cables began to attract investment from private companies. As the entire world slowly digitized itself, these companies specializing in underwater cable technology saw the potential of huge profits and started selling capacity to telecom companies whose traffic demands were soaring through the roof. In the last two decades, the landscape has changed yet again. Big tech giants such as Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook are increasingly sponsoring their own undersea networks to match their customer needs. While telcos such as AT&T and BT still operate or have stakes in dozens of undersea cables, they have long stopped leading the charge in new and emerging markets. In fact, as of 2018, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft owned or leased more than half of all undersea bandwidth. Currently, Google alone owns six active submarine cables and plans to have eight more ready within two years, while Facebook has stakes in 13 cables as part owner and is also developing their own. As storage and distribution of content increases and the old cables laid down in the 90s slowly approach their retirement age, we are again seeing a boom in the undersea cable industry. But hang on a second. You are probably thinking, what about satellite internet? What about Elon's plans with Starlink? Or Facebook's own satellite internet division? Isn't that the future of internet transmission? As it turns out, it is not. Or at least it won't be for the next few decades. There are a few technical limitations that face the satellite internet industry which need to be solved before it can become a viable option. First of all, the cost of launching satellites launch cost still remains astronomically high. Second, coverage demands that thousands of mini satellites be placed into low Earth orbit, covering the entire planet. Such densely packed constellations will exacerbate the problems of collisions and space debris. Third and final, due to the nature of their orbit, not every satellite will be in reach of a ground-based antenna all the time. This means that data packets need to be transmitted from one satellite to the next until it is in the range of a ground station. Satellite to satellite network hopping. This is a technical challenge that most companies are still grappling with. Only Starlink has managed to get the approval of launching 12,000 satellites in low Earth orbit. And then again, Elon has categorically stated that the company aims to provide internet to those users who currently do not have access to high-speed fiber. Thus, undersea cables still remain the most cost-effective and functional solution for high-speed internet transmission. That's why these tech giants are investing huge sums of money to lay newer and faster cables around the globe. But with the incessant march of technology, who knows what the future has in store for these vast networks under our oceans? What do you think? Do you believe that undersea cables are the future? Or are they in danger of becoming obsolete, just like the technology, telegraph, that spawned it 170 years ago? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.